everyone prays with a hope of receiving an answer from God. And sometimes you trust God, you fast, you know, you, you do everything so that God will answer your prayers, but he doesn't. In this video, we are going to see reasons why your prayers are actually not answered by God. This is Asperia. Keep watching. The very first reason why you're not receiving your answers is when you pray with a wrong motive. Now, sometimes you go to God and pray, God, I need this. God, I want this. You ask everything on purely self-gratification. Everything you're asking for is only to benefit you. If God, you give me a car, I'm going to show them, you know, that I've been working. God, you give me this, I'm going to show them. God, give me a child, show that I ashamed them. You know, you ask with a wrong motive. Now, God wants us to ask for things that really are in line with his will and that are going to be used to bring honor and glory to his kingdom. Imagine when you sit down and ask, God, give me a child. Give me so that I will go back to the village and show these people that I am very fertile. You know, God, give me this guy, one, you know, start brushing water on my enemies. God, give me, you know, so many times we have such thoughts in our hearts. You want God to give you something and you use it for selfish interests. Now, when you look at James chapter 4 and verse Three, the Bible says you ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lusts. Sometimes we ask like that so that it will help us, you know, on our, our body. God, if you give me a job, I'm going to, you know, to be moving. I will shift and live in such and such a house, you know. You don't even say, God, if you give me money, I'm going to help the needy. I'm going to, you know, to do this, do that. You know, promising God that you're going to use his money for the right purpose. Maybe that's the reason why you're not receiving that money you have been asking for. And so many times I personally have asked God for things out of selfish and pure gratification for my own self. And it's really bad. And so many times my prayers have not been answered. God wants us to ask for things that are going to be used for his glory. If you have been praying a selfish prayer, change it. Start telling God to bless you so that you can be a blessing to others. The second thing is when you pray with doubt and fear in your heart. Much praying is hindered by doubt and fear. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 1 and verse 6, it says that, But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Now, think about your praying that uh, you're praying that God bless me with the fruit of the womb. I want a baby. And you know for sure that he is the only one who can bless you with a baby. But you're behind going, you know, to meet witch doctors, you know, try this, try that. And you reach a time and you doubt. You doubt and think that God doesn't really work. Doubt and fear hinders prayers from reaching God. When you also look at Mark chapter 11 and verse 23 to 24, he says that whosoever shall have faith in his heart and say to this mountain that move and go the other side, it will move. Faith moves mountains, but doubt brings mountains to us. Every time you pray without trusting in the Lord, without believing that he is the only one able to do for you what you're asking for, you are actually pushing and you're actually bringing all these problems closer to yourself. Faith will make God real in a problem small, but fear and doubt will make God very far. Will make God look like as if he's very far and it will make the problem seem to be really, really too big. Faith 
is very important. If you pray, don't doubt. If you have doubt in your heart that ah, I'm praying, but I don't think I'm praying, but God helps those who help themselves. I'm praying. Uh, you really do not fully trust in the Lord. It's really a very bad thing. Start praying with faith. Doubt causes our prayers not even to reach God because you are praying with a double mind. The double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Third thing that hinders prayers is sin in our lives. When you have sin in your life, it doesn't only hinder your prayers from being answered, but it also limits God from hearing your prayers. God hates sin. With sin in your life, God does not hear your prayer. When you look at Psalms chapter 66 in verse 18, it says that if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. That means if you have any form of sin in your life that you have hidden, that you have not confessed, God will not hear you. He will just not answer. He will not hear your prayer. Sin is a very big hindrance to prayer. Now, when you also re- look at John 9, 31, the Bible says, For we know that God heareth not a sinful man, a prayer of a sinful man. God doesn't hear you when you pray, when you have an unconfessed sin deep in your life. You know, it says in Proverbs somewhere that he who covers his sins shall not prosper, but he who confesses them shall find mercy. So if you have unconfessed sins in your life, God will not hear you. You will not even prosper. You know, sin is such a big hindrance to prayer. So if you know for sure that there is a particular sin you have in your life, as you start to pray, Confess it to God. Tell God, God, I have sinned against you in my life. I have done this. You mention your sins by name. And God says, if you do that, he's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And if you pray, he will hear your prayer. Sin hinders prayers from reaching God. Then the fourth thing, total disregard of God's will. If you pray when you don't regard the will of God, you don't consider God's will in that what you're asking for. It's a big hindrance to our prayers. When you look at uh, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14, uh, the Bible says, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14, uh, the Bible says that, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. God hears us when we ask something that is according to his will. And what is God's will for us? God's will for us is that we use whatever he has blessed us for his glory. We can take an example of a prayer that that was a uh, God is will. And that is a prayer that Solomon did. When God appeared to Solomon in a dream, he asked him, what do you desire? And God and Solomon answered God in, if you will give me wisdom to discern and judge thy great people. You see, Solomon asked for wisdom that he was going to use to be a great king of Israel. Remember, God had called him to be a king after his father David had died. So he needed wisdom. And when he asked for wisdom, God did not only give him wisdom, he also gave him what he didn't ask. He gave him riches. He gave him, you know, everything. And because his prayer 
was in line with God's will. Another example can be the prayer of Hannah. Hannah was barren according to 1 Samuel chapter 1. Hannah didn't have a child and, his, and her co-wife Penina. Penina would provoke her so very much. But when she went to ask for a baby from God, she didn't tell God that God bless my womb so that my co-wife will know that I am not barren. So that my mother-in-law will know that I am not barren. So that the world will know that she Ask God, God, if you will indeed look at my affliction and bless me with a male child, I will bring him back to you and he will serve you for the rest of his life. In that prayer, immediately God answered it and gave Hannah a son, and that son is called Samuel. And if you read the book of 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, you know what Samuel did. Hannah took him back to God as she did promise. So when we pray prayers that are against God's will, against God's purpose for our lives, God doesn't hear them. Imagine when you pray a prayer, God, give me a job. Then I, then you come across an opportunity of you, you know, being a prostitute or serving uh, in a bar or, you know, doing things that do not glorify God. That will not be God's will. God, give me this woman, and this woman maybe is not his child and maybe comes from a certain nation which is not God's nation. God won't answer that prayer because it will not be according to his will. And the last one, disobedience to God's commandments. When we disobey God's commandments in scripture, God doesn't hear our prayers. Look at the Bible. He says in the book of First John, uh, chapter 3 and verse 22, he says that, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasant in his sight. So whatever you're asking for, you can receive it if you keep his commandments. If you don't keep his commandments, then God will not give you whatsoever you're asking for. You know, when we disobey God's commandments, he also, you know, looks at us as rebellious children. Think about a child who comes to you and you tell him, go and do this as a parent, and a child doesn't do that. And when he comes to you, daddy, mommy, I want this. You also don't want to give to that child because she or he is rebellious. It's not obedient to you as a parent. Likewise, God feels the same way every time we disobey him. When you look again in John chapter, first John chapter 2 uh, from verse 3, he says, And hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and a truth is not in him. So every time we disobey God's commandments, we don't, we lie a lot. We don't actually know him. And what are some of the God's commandments? A lot of commandments in scripture. He says that we should pray without ceasing. If you don't pray, you're disobedient to God. He says we should give. If you don't give, you're disobedient to God. He says we should obey our parents. A lot in scripture. So when we don't obey his word, he also does not give to us what we are asking for. So many times that God refuses to answer our prayers when he wants our our attention when he wants us to go back to him you know sometimes we are so much caught up into the worldly things worldly pressures cares of this world what to eat what to do and we forget to trust in the lord to obey his word to even read his word and so he waits for us when a problem hits we go to him and he also doesn't answer oh he answers by saying no and we start saying, God doesn't love me, but do you really love him? Do you really, you know, if you're not yet his child, again, don't even bother praying because God doesn't hear a prayer of a sinful man. The very first prayer that God wants to hear from you is you calling him to be the Lord and Savior of your life first. If you haven't yet done so, you can do so. And I'm willing to help you. Just put a comment in the comment section and I will help you thank you so much for watching this video maybe you have been praying and trusting the lord and your prayers are not yet answered 
try to look on these things that I've mentioned. If you find one and you're guilty about it, go to God and repent, turn to him, and you never know, he can answer your prayer. Thank you so much. Again, if you haven't yet subscribed, it's a kind reminder that you subscribe, turn on the bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. I love you so much. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you.